What's going on, fellas? Now, we've seen this video where I poured a very large e-waste anode out of some shaker table concentrate. So this video is going to show me take this large e-waste anode and turn it into some real good mud that we're going to try to get the gold out of. So let's check this out and see what happens. Okay, fellas, I just now fired this cell back up. The anode is in place. <clears throat> And um, we're already starting to get a little copper plated on here within just seconds. To ensure that all of the copper is removed from the anode and we don't end up with a bunch of copper in our anode sludge, we're going to keep this voltage at about 0.4 volts. The temperature is slowly increasing. We have the heater on. We're going to be bringing this up to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And the amperage will slowly go up as this temperature increases. Just to kind of illustrate the importance of heating the electrolyte. You can see here we've now heated up to 88 degrees, which has translated to 1.1 amps. So that gives us this increase in amperage, but yet we maintain that 0.4 volts. 130 degrees, and that has brought the amperage up to 2.2 amps. Here we are after about 12 hours. I wanted to take a look at this crystal. Oh yeah, it's got a nice glitter to it. Real nice glitter. Real nice clean piece of copper. Got some nodes starting on there. Okay, so I had to do a little rearranging. Just thought I'd get a little shot of what we got going on in here now. See we have the anode in its little bag. and the cathode directly across from it. We're not doing the double cathode this time because I discovered that that leaches too much copper out of the solution. See, I got a pretty good distance in between them. I'm not really too worried about that. They could definitely benefit from being closer. And I'm thinking about bending that tab the other direction or maybe flipping that cathode around to hang off of this bag that would get it closer to the uh, the anode let's do that real quick and see if it affects the amperage any I was worried about touching the anode bag it looks like we're clear kind of hard to see so I have moved the cathode closer to the anode. They're not completely straight with one another. I'm going to bend it here in a second. But that did increase the amperage. Okay, so we're 46 hours in. And I have hooked up this filter system. See at the bottom of this cyclone. I have a hose running over to a filter here. Because everything's getting pretty cloudy. And I think I'm going to add some copper sulfate. Now we're starting to see these little spuds, or these little dendrites. They are super shiny. Almost like some type of uh, gold or something. Very shiny crystals. The phone doesn't really pick it up the way I, when I look at it through the screen, I'm not seeing as much brilliance. Not really much to look at there. Big old black nasty anode. I just want to show you these crystals at 50 hours in. <clears throat> they are beautiful. Sparkling like jewelry. I can't pull that out of there right now. Very nice. Looks like the impurities 
and the electrolyte are starting to plate out. This is not a carbon filter. I kind of want to filter this with an activated carbon filter. About 60 hours in. It's about 70 hours in. We got a very got a very milky color to the electrolyte. I'm gonna carbon filter this, but I just thought we'd take a look at the crystals. Yeah, there's a build up there. What is that? Oh. Yeah, that is a very crystally copper. Gold looking. This thing's getting really heavy. Let's check the back of it. Yeah, it's getting heavy, all right. We're just gonna let this thing keep going as is. All right, we're about 84 hours in. I just hooked up this carbon filter. I'm gonna filter this solution. It's just getting so cloudy. I'm not really into it. So I'm just gonna get a quick look at it now. Then we'll come back and see how long it takes to clear that stuff up. Okay, it's just been a couple of hours. Several hours here. And wow, did that clear that up. You can actually see down inside of there now. And, uh, and it is very crystally. Oddly enough, I don't know if it's a result of the clarification. But our amperage has jumped significantly. And I'm not even fully back up to temperature yet. So there you go, about two hours on the carbon filter and the electrolyte has completely clarified. And for whatever reason, it looks like that has uh, added every bit of uh, 1.5 amps, possibly even two amps of power at this temperature. I also have been adding copper sulfate occasionally. I put it in a small anode bag and just hang it over the side. Okay, 160 hours in. This broke on me. Okay, fellas, so we're about 200 hours in, and I gotta say, I can't wait to try that smooth plate experiment. Look at how beautiful this thick, smooth layer of copper is coming out. We can make the whole thing look like this if the plate stays smooth and we keep our additives right. Now, this is not gonna be pure copper because of the mechanical entrainment caused by these crystals that's why you want to avoid those we're not too worried about it though because this cathode or has to be turned into an anode anyway the anode is severely devastated at this point you can see the dilapidation is significant entire regions flaking off at the slightest touch we're still running at about four amps of power we are definitely losing some size towards the bottom there. Okay, we are at 260 hours. This anode has just about had it. Got to be very careful. Look at that. Very heavily degraded.
And here is our copper crystal, which is very heavy. I gotta grab it very strong. Man, that is beautiful. Beautiful, clean piece of copper and all this filth. Okay, guys, we're coming up on 283 hours. The voltage is the same. The amps have dropped down to three amps. Let's get a look at what we got going on. We're gonna be shutting down. This is the end of the deal. There is the anode tank. Let's get a look at this cathode. Man, that thing is sparkly. Like jewelry, guys. Look at that. Beautiful. The whole thing is just sparkling. The camera's really not picking it up. There it goes. Kind of see that glinting? So we're gonna get this thing shut down. Okay, now here's the anode. Oh, wow. A huge slab of it just fell off. Definitely time to shut this old boy down. So let's get this stuff out of here. And we'll take a better look at everything. But there it is, 283 hours before it gets stained up. This beautiful crystal. It's a shame. And I'm not seeing the same thing in the viewfinder. I'm seeing all these tiny little sparkly shinies that aren't picking up on the viewfinder. Hopefully the video shows them. There we go. That's what I'm seeing. There's a really nice... Notice how we're getting the globules now. Not so much the big long crystals. Which are indicative of too high of an energy density and high of a voltage. Pretty amazing. That is so cool looking. So we'll get this thing weighed and uh, see how much copper we got. I gotta cut this uh, little nub off of here first. Little bit of borax for the bottom there. And I've got my e-waste. Doesn't appear to be as much copper as I thought in there. I'm not gonna filter this or nothing. Two hundred and one point four grams, and I'm gonna throw some already melted down flux on top of this. It's So there it is my airlines were freezing up <clears throat> so I was not able to hit 2600 degrees this time I wasn't getting the air we want so hopefully we got a big old cube of metal in here I, can bust. I, I bet you it does take it to 0.7 okay so there you have it. We got 2.7 grams of the precious metal out of that. I would imagine a lot of the leads and other stuff was oxided out. This should be the good stuff right here. It's a little dirty yet. I'm probably going to remelt it so we can get a better look at it. All right, so essentially the brass tacks here. From what I can tell, there are not huge gold bars of gold in this anode mud but if you look at the numbers typically they say you're going to find around 146 to 200 parts per million of gold in the shaker table concentrate and if you put that in perspective with the average gold ore which is as low as 85 parts per million gold 
it's not doing so bad. It's better than most gold ores. So my main problem is simply losing a couple of beads at the bottom of my crucible is heavily affecting the mathematics of my yield when I log that down in a lab book. So I, I feel like I essentially need a fairly large or at least a decent size rotary furnace for testing something about the size of a small propane tank like a 20 pound propane bottle and I need like 20 30 pounds of anode mud to really get a good or 10 to 15 kilograms or something to to really get a good um, value out of it you know I'm, I'm losing half my gold on my fingers <laughs> trying to smudge the stuff into a jar here and there you know how, what I mean you know not technically but in addition to that I've got several crucibles over there that have some very shiny little metal beads stuck in the glaze in the bottom of the crucible that they didn't consolidate I didn't use a collector metal in any of these because I wanted to see how that goes and I didn't want to have to compel 70 grams of copper that, that could take hours so essentially you need a collector metal of some kind to help consolidate those little beads to get stuck in the nickel oxide the nickel oxide is denser than the slag so it sinks to the bottom if you've got a rotary furnace spinning the consistency is gooey enough that it will let those beads consolidate but just letting a crucible stand you have this layer at the bottom that's just not moving at all so a lot of beads got stuck in that and um, for the most part it's just going to be hard to get 0.2 grams of gold out of this process um, at this point I'm going to take those beads and leach them in nitric acid and we'll check that out in the next video after we do an AR and gold drop